This is Isaac Stein here from the Chess Summit Network, and I'm back. And for this video, I'm doing a live chess game uh, where I play an actual game against an actual person online, and I'll talk about it as I go through with my video. So for this game, I'm going to try playing a G15 game. And already, I have a pretty interesting matchup, so... Ooh, not good. Okay, pardon me, no video, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just start out with C4. Okay, he plays c5. All right, so here I'm gonna try a new line I've been working on, knight f3. Plays knight f6, all right. I'm gonna play d4. All right, so my idea here is I'm essentially gonna create like some sort of bind position. I'll play knight c3 next if he lets me. Yep. If he takes, I'm just playing queen takes and putting my queen back, I'm okay with that. Okay, so he's playing a6 of the idea of maybe playing b5 in the future. This is okay, I'm just gonna play e4. The thing I like about these kinds of positions is it really forces your opponent to have to prove that they know how to play these kinds of positions. Um, or else white's just usually better. Um, as long as I don't let him control the d4 square and I can get a piece on d5, uh, then I'm usually better. Okay, so if I play bishop e3 immediately, I do have to look out for knight g4 tactics. So it might make sense to play a move like f3 first, just as a preliminary caution. Um, yeah. The thing I don't like about knight takes c6 now is while b takes c6 is good for the moment, he does have this nice way of playing c5 and controlling the, uh, the d4 square, so I don't want to give him more ways to play in the center, so I'll just play f3. So I'm going to put my bishop on e3, put my bishop on e2, maybe queen d2, castles. At some point, when the time is right, I'll play knight to d5. Alright, so he's going to play g6, bishop g7, with the idea of putting pressure on d4, so I'm just going to make a prophylactic move and control the center. Alright, I'm going to play bishop to e2. The thing I don't like about this a6 move right now is I thought this was too early. He needs to be focused on getting his knight to d7 and his knight to c5. In order to do that, he needs to stop b4. Okay, in these positions, um, you can kind of tell black is a little bit cramped. I've been offering him this trade for a while, but now that he hasn't taken it and he's kind of further cramped his position, it might make sense for me to just drop back to c2. Um, if I play knight c2, I don't really see an effective plan. There's no easy way for him to expose this diagonal yet because I haven't played b3 yet. So this might be an interesting try for me. I haven't played this line before, but it might be worth it. If I play knight c2, he plays knight e5, I can play b3 and there's no long diagonal tactics. So... Yeah, let's give this a whirl. Let's see what happens. Knight c2. So at some point, if he lets me, I'll put my knight back on... I'll put my knight back on d4 and then again on d5. Alright, so this is tricky. If I play b3 now, he does have like a knight takes e4 move with the threat of this pin. So I might want to play rook c1 first. So that way, if I do play b3, there's no you know, funny discovered tactics ideas. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is he doesn't have b5. So I'm liking this position a lot right now. I'll just play rook c1. I'll castle if I need to make a move. But right now I need to play b3 when he moves this knight, so c4 is protected. And then at the right time, look for knight d5. And then I'm in business. He'll probably castle here. He doesn't have too much to do yet. Um, I suspect he might play this knight e5 move, but he's not really threatening too much. Again, I mean, of course he's threatening the c4 pawn, but I think I can just play b3. And if b5, that's great, but... Okay, well, if I take immediately, I do hang a knight, so I do need to be careful. Um, let me see. Hmm. Could have an interesting sack here. If I play b3, he plays b5. I have intermezzo move knight d5 with the threat of bishop b6 trapping the queen. So if I play b3, he plays b5, and I play knight d5, I do need to be ready for queen a5 check. 
And I can meet that with bishop d2. My pieces are getting a little bit jumbled, and I'm not sure if I'm happy about that. b3, b5, knight d5, knight takes. Pawn takes, that's interesting. Definitely can't be worse for me. I'm definitely at least equal. Um, it's b3, b5, knight d5. He can't take on c4. If he plays queen a5, check immediately. I have bishop d2. He has to move the queen, giving me a free move to play, I guess, knight e3, and then support this knight. In those positions, black doesn't really offer too much either. Okay, so I'll play b3. So he castles. This was not what I was expecting. I was expecting an immediate b5. I thought this was like the way to go and play for an advantage. Um, I don't want to play knight d4 yet. Let's see if I can get knight d5 to work with the threat of bishop b6. If he takes, I can play pawn takes. And king's not exactly safe yet. I'm not crazy about allowing this queen a5 check, necessarily. Um, especially after a combination like b5, where his queen gets pressure on a2 immediately. So it might make sense for me to play castles first, because now if he plays b5, well... Huh. I can play knight d5, and bishop b6, and then knight c7 if I have to, if he plays queen e8. Huh, this might be one of those interesting lines that I'm not so sure about. So castling b5, knight d5, takes on c4, bishop b6, queen e8, and then I play knight c7, that's equal. So yeah, probably the way to go here is castles. I, I'm not crazy about this weak a5 diagonal if he plays b5. So... I'm definitely not worse after castles. I, I definitely have to be careful, but I, I, I'm pretty sure here I have this move, because if he takes, I can take with the c-pawn. I mean, ideally, I'd be taking an e-pawn most bind positions, but because my rook's not on the e and the d-file yet, not so much. But here, I can play my knight to d5. If he takes, I can get my knight on d4 and threaten to put an outpost on c6. So, okay, I'll play knight d5 here. The other option is if he takes, I might have knight b6, but then it might even be good for black to go down exchange with c takes b3, because if I take his knight, he could take my knight on c2 first if he wanted to. So, okay. Uh, I, I thought this was maybe the most passive line, but I mean, that's okay. I guess I'll just take and then put my knight on d4. He might play e6 here, but if he plays e6, I can just take, and then he has a sweet isolated pawn on d6. But... I think now my plan needs to be get my knight on d4, put my queen on d2, control the c-file, and then play for the h6 square for like a bishop h6 kind of move, and at the same time maybe trade on c8 and get my other rook on c1. Um, I might have an interesting idea of maybe playing for a4, because if he takes, I take, I have a threatening, uh, my bishop threatens a6, and all of a sudden this bad light squared bishop becomes, a, you know, interesting, if he plays a move like a5, with my knight on d4, I might have an outpost on b5. So this is an interesting thought, too. It might make more sense for me to play here on the queen side, since my pawn structure is pointing in that direction. And all of black's pieces are on the king side. So maybe bishop h6, not as much, but definitely this knight d4, a4 idea deserves some sort of consideration. Um, if you're thinking maybe b takes a4, b takes a4, bishop takes a4, you're forgetting that my queen's on here on d1. So I'm doing fine. Yeah, I definitely thought... Him playing knight takes d5 was the most passive approach in this position. I I definitely thought if he took on c4, I mean, he definitely had a threefold that I had to force there with the bishop b6, knight c7 idea. But I don't think this line, you know, if it's equal, it's equal. But I don't think I can argue that black is better yet. Um, I still have both my bishops, and I have a lot of pressure on this... Uh, Diagonal from a6 to f1. I don't know. I mean, this is definitely interesting. I'll be really curious to see what black does on this turn. There's no easy way for him to improve his position either. I mean, a move like queen a5, maybe. But 
I mean, that might be his best move, attacking A2. But other than that, not so much. H5, this is nothing. I like Queen A5 because it, it really puts a question to my pawn. And if I try this A4 plan immediately, it's not working out so well. Okay, so the, if I play Knight D4 and he plays Queen A5, now I have... Well, if I play Rook takes Rook, he has a file, so maybe I just play an immediate Queen D2 and I'm fine. In this line, I'm okay. So, yeah, Knight D4. He has no threat with this H, H file because if he ever goes to H3, I can just play G3 and I'm safe. So... I can play knight to d4, a4, and then just put pressure on the queen side and see what happens. This is going to happen far faster than any h pawn push over here. Uh, maybe he's doing this because he's afraid I'm going to play queen d2 and he wants to keep this dark squared diagonal. I'm not. I'm not positive. Um, so okay, knight d4. Let's see what happens. Okay. So. What is he gonna do against a4? I mean, maybe, no, he can't even play b4 because then that just hangs the pawn. And if he plays rook a8, that just seems like a wasted move at that point. Now now I get a free move to improve my position. And there's still no reason why I can't play a4. I wanna wait though. Okay, so I thought he might do this. So I said queen d2 earlier. I do need to be careful if there's no discovery. So queen d2, queen takes, bishop takes. Huh. No knight takes f3. If he moves the knight to like d3 or c4, it might just make sense to pick up the knight and let him take my knight on d4. Although if he goes to c4... I... I don't know if the discovery will actually help black here. I, I uh, th There's not exactly a square that it can go that makes its position any better. Queen d2. Queen takes, bishop takes. I mean, I guess the only thing that it does is with the a4 idea, I no longer have this extra protector. Let's see if there's another way I can make this work. I don't want to give him the c file, so rook a1 is not the option I'm looking for. But I don't want to give up the a2 pawn, because that gives up my queenside counterplay. So maybe queen d2 is the most sound. Makes a forcing move on the queen. He has to do something about it. Bishop a6 is also an option. So, okay, queen d2. So if he plays queen takes queen, bishop takes queen. Knight d3, I just take him. I'm okay with that. Knight c4, I think I can just take on c4 if bishop takes d. And just play king h1. And then... Well, I don't know, I have a backwards pawn on the c-file. Okay, so bishop takes his forest. So if knight c4... Huh, I do not like that move for him. And the reason why is the c-file is almost like a commodity in the position. It's like whoever controls it's doing better. So he just wants to trade all of the rooks. Isn't that bizarre? I think I, I think I can still pull off this a4 idea now, because now he doesn't have that extra protector. And this discovery move doesn't stop the threat that a4 has in the position. In fact, it's even stronger now with a knight on d4. So a4, knight c4, I mean... Could I bishop takes c4? Because then if bishop takes d4, I play king f1, takes, takes. I think I get up a pawn in these lines. Let's see this again. a4... Mm, well, if knight c4, I can't take with bishop because then I just lose a minor piece. So I can't do that. So a4, c4, he's attacking d2. Don't want to give him that bishop. So I take his knight on c4, he takes a check. Huh. He calculates it out. So a4, knight c4. Maybe I just play like bishop c3 in between. But then he has a nice pin. And he can play a move like b4. But then I just play bishop a1. I can play knight c2 to protect my bishop if I need to. His knight's under attack and his a6 pawn has pressure on it, certainly. So, okay, a4, let's try it out. Even if this doesn't want the a6 pawn, what it does is it kind of forces this light squared bishop to kind of just stay around and protect this a6 square. So, 
you know, most Marozzi positions, it's like mild bad light squared bishop against your, you know, okay light squared bishop. If, you know, if you can get it to c6, but this end game's turning to be like anything but. You know, so I'm just taking on a4. If he moves his knight, I might have an interesting option of getting a knight onto c6. Um, but now knight c4 ideas might get kind of annoying. So it's with check. Um, so I might want to play like a move like king f1. Get my king a little bit more active. Doesn't really do too much to improve the position though. Um, maybe I play a move like knight b3 with the idea of knight a5. Relocating my knight to a better square, getting off the long diagonal. That might be, that might be prudent. Now his knight has like no squares, maybe he goes to d7. But if he goes, the moment his knight moves away from e5, he's no longer covering the c6 square. And it makes a move like knight a5 just that much stronger. I don't know, this position's kind of interesting. It might be still equal, but the thing I'm not so sure about for black is this dark squared bishop, while it's a monster right now with this long diagonal, this whole game is going to be about who can control this pawn and who can control this square. Both being on light squares, this dark squared bishop is going to have a hard time rerouting effectively. Um, so... It's almost as if my dark squared bishop is better placed for some sort of queenside maneuver. But again, all the critical squares are light squares in this position. Okay, this is interesting. So, if I take, he takes, and I'm not positive that he has any advantage, but now this is a weak pawn. So... Maybe my first move is to play a move like knight a5, put pressure on this bishop. He can't play bishop takes d5, obviously. If he plays e takes d, I just grab his bishop. So move like knight a5, met by bishop c8. If I take then on e6... Yeah, not so crazy about that yet. Think about having the knight on a5, it's going to be hard for him to get a bishop on either e6 or b7. So maybe knight a5, bishop c8, bishop b4. Putting a lot of pressure here on d6, forcing a move like bishop f8. But then how do I continue? Um, starting to run low here on time. Let's see. So I like this knight a5 move, so I'm going to give this a shot. Maybe I play like bishop b4, wrap my round, knight around to c4, put even more pressure, and then my light squared bishop will be on a really awesome square on c4 if he takes. Okay, so bishop f8. Now I think knight c4 is strong. And I think he has to take my knight now. And now I think I have two good bishops, but I don't know if that will be enough. I just know that my bishops are probably better than his. I might have an interesting king walk where I just go into f2 and just walk this way towards the queenside pawn, but I don't even know if the edge pawn can win it, because in order to win it, I have to trade my light-squared bishops, leaving a dark-squared bishop and a light-squared promoting square. So he takes, I take. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he took here... On d5, or play bishop b7 for that matter. Well, if he played bishop b7, I could just take. So he'll probably take on d5. But if he does that, then this pawn's weak forever. Um, I really did not like this e6 move at all. In fact, now I hate, hate this idea because now this bishop is like trapped forever. So I think bishop a5 is a good positional move. Well, I might want to wait for bishop e7 so I know he's going to d8. So I need to bring in my king first. So bishop, king f2. I'm not quite sure what my opponent's play is here. At the right moment, when he plays bishop e7, I'll play bishop a5 to cut off his uh, bishop. So he's playing f5 to take, maybe, but he's still not going to be able to attack this pawn effectively, so I'm just going to play king to e3. If he plays f4, then he has no way to be able to continue play, especially with his dark squares. Okay. So I guess the question for me now is, what do I want to do with this bishop? Uh, how do I get in the position? So maybe... Maybe now I should start rerouting to a5, so I have this bishop d8, bishop c7 idea. 
All right, so he might want to play bishop e7 himself. So I think I might want to play h3, just cover my squares. So if he plays g4, I can take take and then move my king out of the way so my bishop can just have all access to the diagonal. If he doesn't do anything, I can probably play bishop d8. Okay, so he plays king g6. All right, time to start moving my king in, for sure. All right. This could get interesting. I think time will definitely play a factor for me. Um, I'm going to be have to be. I'm going to have to be careful with these pushes. But as long as this g2 pawn's on the light square, this bishop doesn't have a shot of winning this pawn. So, I think as long as I can play bishop c7, king a5, I, I have a, I have a good chance of winning this game. Because then I'll have a pass pawn, and my opponent still has to find a way to attack the g2 square. And that that itself won't be easy. Even with my bishop all the way over on c7. So. It should definitely be interesting. Yeah, I think my opponent made a miscue in this game. My pawns are all on light squares, so he should have been trying to trade off his dark squared bishop since all of his pawns are on dark squares. I think the critical moment was when his king went to f7, he needed to be going to e8 with the idea of bishop d8. And I think that that might have been his best chance to keep equality. Up until this point, I mean, he had been playing passively, but he had maintained equality in the position. But now... Now, I, uh, now I'm not so sure because this king f7, king e8 maneuver now is really slow and I can win a6 relatively easily. Um... And I wonder if my opponent's just now starting to realize that. Because there's really no way for him to break through. I mean, as long as I have bishop c7 and king a5 in the position, I think he's busted. Let's see, g4, h takes g4, h takes g4. And then I just don't do anything. I can just play bishop c7. If he takes an f3, that's okay, I just take. And if he tries to move his king towards it, I can always play bishop f2 until I get to a5 with my king. Okay, so here I play h takes g4. h takes g4. Okay, so I need to get my bishop out of my way. Now, I don't know if moving into c7 is so effective because it's not like he's just going to give me this pawn. So maybe it might be more effective to play b6. So that way I'm covering the king side as well. Kind of like, uh, you know, attack and defense measure. So let's play bishop b6. The only thing I might be worried about here... Yeah, is if his king tries to enter in this way first. So I might, if I play bishop f2, he has bishop d8. So maybe I play king a5, king h4, bishop f2 check. If he plays g3, the game's over. It's the, he loses. So king h5, uh, no, king h5, bishop, king h4, bishop f2, king moves away, and then I just take on a6, and if he plays bishop d8, I have an intermezzo bishop. Well, I can play king b5 too at that point. That might be the best move to do. As long as I can keep him from entering on h4, I'm okay. So let's play king h5. So I only have 66 seconds in the position, but I already have a clear plan of what I want to do. Um, yeah, and I think this bishop b6 move is critical. I don't. Th I think if I play bishop c7, it might only be equal, because then he has this king h4 idea, and he walks through with g3. Now he doesn't have that as easily, at least. Um, let's see, king h4, bishop takes a6, let's see, he plays king g3. Well, then I just grab his... Bishop. So, king h4, bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6, king takes a6, king g3, then wouldn't be so good, but no, no, I can't do that. I was thinking maybe bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6 after king h4, so king h4, bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6, bishop f2, but he has g3, which is a nice intermezzo move. Okay. The thing for me to notice here, though, is his light-squared bishop doesn't have any scope to actually stop my pawn from promoting. 
So that might actually be an interesting sack. King h4, bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6, bishop f2, g3. I move my bishop to, I don't know, like a7. So I'm going to come into b6. But now he has no way of entering my position effectively, although he might have bishop h3 ideas. So like bishop c8, king b6, bishop h3, a5, takes g2, a6, bishop h3, a7, g2, a8, queen with check. So my king, as long as it's not on b6, I should be fine. Okay, but here, I think I just have bishop f2 now. And now the game's going to be over. Yeah, his king's now way too far. And bishop h3 ideas can just be met with bishop f2. And then I'm going to take the pawn on a6 with my king. Yeah, he this this is lost now. This g3 move... The, when you have a square like g3 to be able to enter through, it's really important to use it. And that's why I thought it was so critical for him to trade direct squared pieces... Because then I would always have to protect this g3 square, and that's why I thought it might be a draw. Um, but now, I mean, as long as I can manage my 42 seconds that I have left, I'm fine. So yeah, for those of you guys who are wondering what I was analyzing before, after king h4, bishop takes a6, maybe it's better for me, but the, there was no need to make the complication. Just play bishop f2 check first, you know, like I had originally planned. Um, there's no need to rush this a6 pawn attack because there's no way that this dark squared bishop can be another defender of this pawn and I have two attackers he's one defender and that's going to be it so you know pretty much the rest of this game is going to be does he play bishop h3 or not if he plays bishop h3 just bishop f1 if he takes entry 2 I take back he still has no entry square because the light squares are so strong for me because of my pawn chain his pawn chain actually hurts him because his bishop's inside the pawn chain I mean this seems like a very basic elementary opening idea of good bishop bad bishop but it definitely applies here in this end game uh, again, that's why it was so crucial for him to try to trade this bishop on d8, try to make some sort of equality. Um, if he tried doing that, I would probably have tried to bring in my king. And so if he played bishop takes, I have king takes with the pressure on a6, but I, I don't know if that would have been winning or not. Um, my bishop is from a5 is kind of in the way of my king entering, but it was the only way I could really have any feasible play. Um... But up until that point, my opponent had been playing reasonably well. All right, he might play bishop of, uh, bishop to c8 here, uh, but at this point, he's just playing hope chess. So my goal is probably to play king takes a6, get my king on b7, and I can just push the pawn undisturbed. Okay, he takes that way. I'm just going to take here. If he trades bishops, that's great. My light squares are still so strong, and his dark square bishop can do absolutely nothing about it. And furthermore, he can't even get over to the other side because my bishop on b6 is so well placed. Okay. Um, he might try to take my a pawn and try to play me on time, so I'm just going to play there. And I'm going to put my... Uh, well, that was probably not such a smart idea. I probably want to play bishop b7, bishop c6. If he takes my pawn, whatever. Then I can enter in through c6. So yeah, this was this was the better plan. I would probably been probably would have realized that it's just my time is kind of concerning. So bishop c6, he could have bishop c8, but then at that point I played bishop c7, and then put my king on b6, and I can advance my pawn again. So now his bishop's stuck here. He has to go between f8 and e7. It's just a matter of pushing my pawn. And there's no way for his king to enter because of my pair of bishops. He might even take my pawn here. Yep. Okay, so now I just need to get my king to c6, and I'm just going to start eating pawns. Alright, so this is just a pre-move. Whatever he does, bishop takes d6 is my next move. Okay, he doesn't take. I just go there. Um... Whatever, and I can just, I should I should have just done this to start with, I'm just losing time now. Uh, I can just push. I can go there. Uh, just throw in a check. I, I want to try to throw off this bishop before I promote that pawn. 
I mean, I do have 10 seconds, so if I can get rid of all of his pawns, he's insufficient mating material. So that does make me happy. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just taken b6. And then I just need to pre-move the rest of these. Uh, wait, oh, I won. I won on time. Wow, lucky me. Um, yes, yeah, so let's go over this game. I, this was this was a very interesting game, and I thought my opponent played reasonably well. Um, so let's go to this game here. Okay. So this was in English. I tried a new line with this d4 idea. I've been playing around with this a lot on Blitz. I didn't like a6, and the reason why is in the Morozzi, you like to get pressure as black on the d4 square. So usually you see like a knight c6, knight c5, knight e6 plan. And in order to play knight c5, you need to stop b4. So move like a6, while it does threaten b5, I thought it was premature. You're, you're committing too early to some sort of queenside play. I thought maybe Fianchettoing with g6 might have been better than a6, but I mean, it turned out okay for black. Bishop b2 was probably unnecessary. That was probably a move that I didn't need to make. Probably queen d2. Would it, in hindsight, would have been better because in that way, when I played knight c2, I didn't have to constantly worry about this long diagonal. So bishop e2, bishop d7, knight c2, rook c8. So yeah, as I said here, I didn't like the idea of having to play b3 because of this uh, uh, discovered on the long diagonal with knight takes e4 ideas, putting pressure on a1. So I played rook c1. Okay, so here I thought was the first misstep for my opponent. I thought he had to play b5. If he plays b5, then uh, I was looking at the game, probably this move, knight d5, threatening the b6 square. That was probably what drove him away from that move. So he castled. Did I lose my history of the game? Uh-oh. Uh, let me go back. Um, I don't use ICC that much for game reviews, so pardon me. What? All right. So here we were, and castle, I had to get my king out of the way. I didn't like the idea of these queen a5 check lines. I thought that they offered equality for black. So I decided to get my king out of the way, and b5, knight d5. So my threat was, if he played takes on c4, I was just going to play bishop b6, queen e8, knight c7. Um, I haven't played this knight c2 line before, so there's probably a better way to deal with that, but I definitely had equality with bishop b6. Um, unless he wanted to give me the exchange after knight c7, rook takes c7, bishop takes c7. But... At that point, then his queen side just falls apart. So I knew I was definitely equal here. This is the most passive approach. Um, it doesn't give me a traditional Morozzi pawn structure, but I was quickly able to regroup. Remember, in the Morozzi, usually you take with the e pawn and then you point towards the king side. So you play towards you know the e file, maybe a little bit on the king side. But here my plane changes a little bit. My my pawn structure is point towards the queen side, and I need to find a way to make this e2 bishop a good bishop, so I just looked for how do I get a4 in, so knight d4, he played queen a5, I liked this move, I thought tra trading queens couldn't hurt black, um, but as the game progressed, my space advantage here in the center definitely became an issue, I mean, I never even got to a point where I had to worry about putting my knight on c6, because of just the amount of space I had. Trading rooks... I wasn't so sure about all of this, actually. And the reason why was I thought Black needed to keep the pressure in the game, and maybe it was critical for him to find a way to trade the pair of knights. If he could trade the pair of knights, then he might be able to control this dark square diagonal and hold equality. Um, but now I'm, I wasn't so positive. This maneuver not only put a bishop on a bad square, but at the same time, I, I already have a space advantage, and I, it, it's not like... Black is so cramped that trading pieces really helped him. In fact, it gave me a strategic edge because I had this A4 move in, and this is what I had planning with and talked about the whole game. So takes, takes, bishop b7. I mean, his plan was to play e6, and on e6, if I had known that that was his plan, then I, I should have probably played a move like bishop b4. But, I mean, e6 was just a horrible move, so I thought knight b3 was fine because I get off this long diagonal, and the bishop's somewhat misplaced. Okay. So why do I not like this e6 move? Well, he created the backwards pawn here on d6, right? And it's on a dark square, so not only do I have a weakness on a light square, I have a weakness on a dark square. And I'll be able to hold down both of those bishops to these two weaknesses. It's not like one of the bishops could cover both, it's he has to use both of his bishops, or a bishop and a knight to cover both. So I liked that for me. I played knight a5 to force the bishop onto a much worse diagonal. And then I played bishop here. 
played knight c4, takes, takes. So I'm maintaining the pressure on both weaknesses. And then he played e5. And at this point, I realized I can't lose this endgame. I didn't know if I was better yet, but I knew I couldn't lose. And the reason why was this long diagonal was the only thing black really had going for him in this game, and he just shut it down. And a move like f5, like he tried in the game, I don't have to take. And because I don't have to take, these two diagonals are shut down for the rest of the game, and this bishop is stuck protecting a6, so he can't even go after this e4 pawn. So, I knew I had small advantages, but the win wasn't there yet. There's no obvious win yet. So I just brought my king into the game. I played king e3. I could have probably played king e2 and king d3, but I wanted to kind of lure my opponent into playing a move like f4. And the reason why was... That limits his play to these two pawns over here, and as soon as I play a move like h3, he has no breakthrough in the light squares. That's the only thing this bishop is doing besides protecting a6, so I make this bishop obsolete. So we go to the next moves, I play bishop a5 to cut off the bishop, and h3, so the bishop is obsolete. So here, I think my opponent needed to have played king to e8, followed by bishop e7, bishop d8. So, if he does that, so let's say he plays king e8, I think I just play king c3, Bishop b7, king b4, bishop b8. Hmm, I don't know. I, I still... I might be better there. So, let's see. King e8, king c3, bishop b7, king b4, bishop d8, bishop takes d8, king takes d8, king a5, and I'm winning the a-pawn. So, definitely not equal there. So, maybe that I was winning more than I thought. This is just a matter of gaining small advantages here. And... While it might be positionally critical for him to trade this Dykes right diagonal, I, maybe he was right. Maybe the best way for him to see counterplay was to play on the king side. So king g6, king c3, bishop e7, king b4. Just the same idea. I need to just secure this diagonal just long enough for my king to get to a5. g4, takes, takes. So this is the first critical move I made. I think it was bishop b6. And the reason why was... If he plays a move like g3, his only he has no way to enter because there's no way for him to get to king h3, right? Because his g2 pawn covers h3. So his only way to enter is through h4 and then g3. So if I'd done what I was originally planning, which was bishop c7, there's no way for me to cover that diagonal from c7. But by playing bishop b6, not only can I go king to a5, I can play bishop f2 and do a nice job of covering that. He played king g5, I played king a5, and I think my opponent's in some sort of zigzag here. He played king h4, and if you remember, I was considering bishop takes a6. There's no need to do that. I know I'm either better, and there's no way I can lose. So, rather than let my opponent back in the game with this idea of bishop takes a6, king, uh, well, bishop f2, what was I looking at? Bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6, king takes a6, or something like that? Something ridiculous? No, it was bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6, bishop f2 check, g3, bishop a7, bishop c8, and then trying to promote this pawn. Rather than going through all of that, it would have just been much simpler to do what I did in the game, which is just to close off this diagonal. This pawn on a6 has been here for forever, so he's not going to be able to move it. So I just moved the bishop back, and this was his last trick to try to win the game. And here in time trouble, I probably made a couple moves that didn't need to be made, um, but I regrouped my bishops, and then I just did a nice job of cutting his king off, got up a bishop, and at this point it was just a time scramble, but... Uh, I just tried to win all of his pawns. Uh, bishop f8 was not necessary. Uh, I needed to have come in from the other way, so that way I could just push my pawn. And I... Rather than trying to promote with 8 seconds left, I just decided it was better for me to get rid of all his pawns. I actually thought he had a minute left still, so I was just playing to make sure it was insufficient material first. And I just started pushing pawns like crazy, and then he, he ran out of time. Lucky for me. So, yeah, this was definitely an interesting game. And, you know... After having gone over it, I realized like I was much better in the endgame than I thought I was. Um, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that I gathered small advantages. Once my opponent started to trade down the pieces, it was a game of whose bishops were better. And when I played a move like a4 to make this pawn on a6 really weak, I turned my bad bishop on e2 into a very strong piece. Uh, and it made black's bishop on, on b7 really weak. And that was the other reason why I didn't like him playing a6 so early in the opening. I thought maybe a5 would have been more prudent. But... I think my opponent definitely lost the game when he played e6, in, in hindsight. And the reason why was he just made this d6 pawn so weak, and both of his bishops were behind his pawns, giving me the opportunity to go forward. And I wasn't so sure during the game because of the time I had if I was actually better. Um, but I knew that my opponent couldn't win the game, and that was enough for me to be able to find ways to win. So... 
This is Isaac Steinkamp signing off with my first live chess video here on the Chess Summit Network. Hoping you a happy new year and a happy and safe 2015. Bye.